Or are we doing it? We're doing it. We're, we're, we're recording. <laughs> so I've got a new cameraman, mother. I had to fire her for insubordination. So I got me and Yon. He said he didn't want to be on film, so he'd rather be behind the camera in front of it. He's with his buddy here from Georgia. This boy here is looking at my sawmill. What's your name? Kelly. Kelly. Kelly well, they call him House because he looks like House Cartwright. And uh, two pretty good fellas here looking at it. We're talking sawmills and telling lies and just having a real good time here on the porch. These videos a little bit easier to make when I got company, you know. I don't have to do all the talking, but I probably will, for I can't keep my mouth shut. But now, where are you from? Rayburn, Rayburn, Rayburn County, Georgia. Rayburn, Georgia. He's a sawmiller from down there, and he's looking at my mill. And hopefully, we'll strike up a deal here, and my mill will become a Georgia peach. <laughs> We'll, we'll just have to do the best we can with it, you know. And what's my cameraman's name? Ben. Ben. He's a little shy. He said he's just too good looking to be with us, fella. <laughs> so, and he's got a point there, you know. But yeah, these fellas, they, they're more into crushing rocks, too. Both of them works at a rock crusher, so. I can't get too sicy with them. They're pretty good sized fellas. Anybody who can work at a rock crusher's got to be tough. That much I know. How many years you rock crushed? I've been there about six years, man. Pretty good while. How many have you been? I've been there about a year and a half, I believe. Yeah. That's why Ben's still good looking. He ain't been there long enough to get skin up much. That's you know, right. broke down. But, uh, it, Raven George is pretty, that's some pretty country down there. Now it's kind of mountainous too, ain't it? Yeah, he's about like this here. Yeah. You know. I'll never forget one time we come back from uh, Daytona Beach, Florida. And I come up with a bright idea that I wasn't going to go in the state of South Carolina. Why I come up with that idea, I don't know. But anyway, and they was doing some work on that 441. Mm -hmm. And I, so help me God, it was a pig trail. We went through places that a man needed four-wheel drive. <laughs> it was like 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. I can make, I can take some real good shortcuts sometimes, and I think that's one of them. Mary Ruth is about ready to kill me over there. George has done so much road work. You can set traffic cones out down there, and I just follow her right off the edge of a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. That's the way all these places, I mean, you, you start going down the road and it's just traffic cones after traffic cones. It takes a pretty good man to go through Atlanta. <laughs> Me and Mary Ruth have been down there back when I was looking for a chipper before I got that. We was coming back. We'd rented a little old car. And we was right at the bottom end of Atlanta. It is like 4.30 in the evening. She is puttering along about 65 miles an hour. I said, if you don't step it up and go, I said, that that traffic's going to catch us, that rush air traffic. And it's going to be a mess. Well, I made her mad. I got to go through Atlanta between 90 and 95 miles an hour. Atlanta's a tough little town to maneuver through. Yeah. Last time I come up through there, I was on the motorcycle. It was like 8.30 in the morning. It wasn't bad at all. It was on Sunday morning. And I was on some kind of bypass. I don't know which one, but we didn't go right through downtown. Then, but we, we come up through there and it wasn't too bad. Yeah. Now, when Yun's come up this way, Yun's come through Franklin. And that way, yeah. that's a pretty drive through there. Yeah. yeah. We hit 40 and come up that way. Yeah. He's a... He's a big part of North Carolina out in there that I've never seen, you know, like marble. And I'd never been here before, so I was, I was kind of worried about the traffic because I want Atlanta. I will not go down there. My brother lives down there, and I, I absolutely will not go down there. But I, I was kind of afraid about Asheville, but we just went out of Atlanta. Yeah, Asheville ain't too bad. 
it, it ain't bad at all, you know, compared to the rally of the Aqua. I mean, Atlanta, I don't know how many miles that is, but there's, there's several miles there you got to go through. Yeah. yeah. And I know when we come back up through there, me and Mary Ruth, and I had her mad. <coughs> there was a black guy in a road tractor. And he had a box of chicken between his hands there, and a chicken leg in one hand and a drink in the other, and he was driving with the palms of his hands. At, and it's just like he is out for a Sunday drive. And here I am, my, just like that, you know, hanging on to the dice, just knowing I'm going to be killed in a minute. I just ain't got that kind of nerve to ride, you know. I guess these people that do it every day don't pay it a whole lot of money. No, know. probably not. Now, Atlanta's tough. Wait a minute. Anytime you go south, if you go down 75, it's usually bumper to bumper. And if you go on further east and go down 95, it's just as bad. Yeah. Well, my brother, he moved down there. He likes that fast pace down there, but I, I can't hardly take that it. That ain't for me. I, I, but you know, once you once you get in the habit of something other like that, it ain't too bad. But I'd rather be here up on this hill where they ain't. <laughs> Traffic running every which way. Be a lot of game to hunt down there where you is at. A lot of deer. Oh, yeah. yeah. I figured the hunting would be pretty good down there. Black bear. Yeah. They're all over the place down there. Are they? Yeah. We've got a lot of black bear. Well, way more than we used to have. Yeah. And hogs. Hogs has really, really moved in there. Are they a season on hogs, or can you hunt no, them? No, any time, time they're, they're they're considered the most animal, like a, like a, uh, coyotes. Yeah, yeah, pretty much ain't no rules on them. You can. Is them things fit to eat? But uh, if, if you go about it right, uh, you know a boar, of course. Yeah. If you get him hot and bothered, they ain't gonna be able to flip anyway. No. A sow, if you kill a sow, it's going to be just as good as a regular dog. And a lot of them is domestic hogs. It's just been it's turned loose. And they, yeah. yeah, over there where I'm from, I'm talking back, you know, like in the early 1900s, some company bought just a huge track of land, and they was going to try to raise hogs. Well, they went broke, and they just left. And my grandmother said for years all you had to do was go to the woods and fall and kill your hogs. She said the woods is full of them. My granddad told me one time when they was young, when, when, when he was 10 or 11 years old, that they used to free range their hogs. Yeah. They just turned them loose and they, they'd cut their ear, mm -hmm. you know, and turn them loose and then they'd go find them and kill them, I guess, when they yeah. got ready. Yeah, when, and I've heard my grandmother talk, but everybody over in there had a, a chestnut patch, you know, yeah. four or five chestnut tree, and then the fowl a lot of times. About this time of year, they'd, they'd get them, when them chestnuts were falling, they'd just fence them hogs in there, and uh, said they'd get the fat off them chestnuts, they couldn't even walk. Yeah. So they'd go in there and kill them. But, I ain't never seen no wild hogs around here, never hear it. Well, I have heard of them, but it's been years ago, you know. There was a guy that I used to know. He'd go down to South Carolina and hog hunt. And I think of him and his brother snuck some in and turned them loose. The people killed them, they didn't. But now we're in turkeys, we're covered up in turkeys, them things is everywhere. They're just almost a nuisance. Yeah. And, uh, and like, I use a barrel come through here two or three times a year. And my has got three or four deer that she feeds. She feeds everything. That bar's going to eat her one of these days. <laughs> but yeah. But I figured the hunting would be good down that way. I just, looks like it's a good country to be a hunting in, you know. Oh, yeah. I imagine there's some good timber down there too, ain't it? Oh yeah, yeah. That, that's, it, you know, it was logged off years ago, but they, there's some good timber coming back. There's yeah. a lot of white pine up there. 
you know, them lower limbs are starting to shuck out and needs to be, a lot of it needs to be harvested. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they, our trouble around here, most of our timberland's gone now because we've got houses on it. Yeah. And uh, just the only timberland we got is steep. It, you know, it ain't fit to build a house on. Yeah. Now, out in here, when I moved here like 30 years ago, all these little patches of timber around here, they, they houses on them now, you know. Yeah. But uh, our white oak out here is pretty good. Now our red oak ain't much. Yeah. And white pine out here is good. Yeah, that's, that's about the same way it is there at the house. You go a little further south down there and you can get some really good yellow pine. You know, you get on yeah. down there below the little falls in that area. You can, I you bet that's some, yellow pine country, ain't you, Yeah, you can see some good yellow pine come out of there once in a while. Are they still a lot of sawmills down in there? No, no big mills. That, you, 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 where we're at, I know two mine and one more operational circle mill. Yeah. Uh, that's about the way it is here in Buncombe County. My, I know two mine and one more. There's a ton of them little old band mills. You know, oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're all over the place. And I, you know, if Lance just saw it for himself and whatnot, I, I, I mean, they're probably pretty good meals. They just ain't my cup of tea. That's you know? where I me, mean, I never did like them. And I, you know, I, uh, if you get one set up right and get a big enough one, I mean, you, you can cut some lumber of that thing. You can cut good lumber, too. But I just like a circle meal. I understand the circle man. Yeah. You know? yeah. I'll never forget one time we was at an auction. And the old guy that I was there with, he had a pretty good sized mill. And the guy he was talking to had a huge mill. No guy I was there with, he said he was thinking about putting in a band mill. And that, that old guy had a huge mill. He said, that's a good way to make it. He said, he said it takes a lot. And, locked up keep a band mill and I've, I've always remembered that you know i seen one one time that that had the, the big wide band and it had a carriage just like a circle mill mm -hmm. and and this thing had teeth on both sides and it would cut coming and going yeah and and as far as production goes it looked like it would be a, a pretty productive mill but you know i I don't uh, know. I've got a friend down here in Madison County, and he went up to Pennsylvania in Amish country and bought it. But it's bigger than, say, a wood miser. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it probably runs like a four-inch band. Mm -hmm. And it'll saw up going in a coming. And it, i seen his lumber. He, he makes some good lumber. Yeah. But now it wasn't set in the woods on foreign speed. You know, you had to give his time. Yeah. He's got a little diesel loader on him. He pulls. It looks to be like a 20 horse or something. Like yeah. But you take one of them big bands. Now them things is fast. Yeah. They'll, they'll put the lumber out. But, and yeah. they claim they're a little better on hardwood. You know, I, yeah. I don't know. I could see that because you can, you can change your band and, and change the number of teeth and stuff that yeah. you have on it and whatnot. Yeah, and you know, they're running so fast, <laughs> I guess it's got time to slow down, you yeah. know. Uh, I, way before my time, but I'm like back in the 1920s, they was a big band mill down here in what they call Runyon. It's in Madison County. And they had their own little railroad and they, floated logs down all them streams and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I reckon back then they was capable of like 50,000 feet a day. Yeah. And they run like an 18-inch band. It, it, it was a huge affair. I, I talked to old man at work down there and he said it was a sight to behold back in, you know, back then. Yeah. But the Great Depression got them. Ben looks like he is really concentrating. I am. I may just have to follow Mary Ruth. I believe you're a better cameraman than she is. <laughs> I may be. Probably. <coughs> well, I guess that 
we've probably talked about everything we can. Let's wrap this thing up. If I talk too long, nobody will watch it no way. <laughs>